Hello, everyone. Welcome to Global Government News. Today is Monday, May 7th, 2012, and I'm Darko. My website is ggnonline.com and ddarko2012-2013 on my YouTube channels. All right, so I have a crap load of news articles to get to, so just stick with me here. Um, the headlines and links will be posted in YouTube's video description unless there's problems or unless my wrist or something is hurting, <laughs> which has been uh, lately, so I may not be able to do them all the time in the future just to give you a, a little bit of a warning ahead of time you know worst case scenario you could just go in there and type in the headline uh, in the start page search or, or whatnot and uh, it'll you'll be able to find it so also just give me a few days to get uh, back in the groove so to speak as far as um, presenting these uh, videos it may be a little rusty at first Michigan town near Ohio could become China City 415 unit housing complex would be home to the Chinese business people. The southwestern or southeastern Michigan city of Milan, a 40 minute or so commute to Toledo or Detroit industrial centers might become the new home for a 200 acre or larger China city that would house Chinese business people. A group of mainline Chinese known as Sino-Michigan Properties LLC paid almost $2 million for 200 acres of farmland on Milan city limits and purchased this year in 2011. U.S. military industrial giant KBR is bidding to privatize British police forces. I'm not sure if you remember me covering this from a Mail Online article or Telegraph article. But uh, the giant U.S. military industrial company, Kellogg, Brown & Root KBR, is running to win a slice of the controversial 1.5 billion uh, euros or pounds. I'm sorry, that's 1.5 billion pounds or 2.43 billion dollars contract to transform the West Midlands and Surrey police uh, forces in Britain. Next up we have taxes cost Canadian families more than food, clothing, and shelter combined. A Canadian family earning an average income spends more money each year on taxes than on the basic necessities of life, concludes a new report published by the Fraser Institute. So I wonder what the, um, the global happiness index uh, would be for them. Are they still happy? Hmm. They could still be happy, right, as they go into poverty or austerity. Americans too broke to go bankrupt. And, of course, this is the reason, right, for a lot of this stuff. Oh, we can't afford it. We can't afford uh, this, uh, you know. I'm not even for having political law enforcement pigs on the streets. But, hey, you know, if you still believe in the government and having police and all this and laws and, and whatnot, and you're paying for these, quote, services, uh, now we're going to privatize it, right? We're going to privatize your water and that. Americans too broke to go bankrupt. So this year, hundreds of thousands of Americans are expected to be broke, uh, so broke uh, that they can't even file for bankruptcy. It says the average cost uh, to file for Chapter 7 protection uh, is more than $1,500, according to the recent research. As a result, anywhere between 200,000, basically, a quarter million and one million consumers are estimated to be unable to afford that steep cost this year. So we have sky-high electric bills courtesy of Obama's EPA's war on coal. So let's just not say it's Obama. It was just about it for this global cartel of all the different complexes, energy complex especially. So if somebody wants to build a coal power plant, they can. It's just that it will bankrupt them because they're going to be charged a huge sum for all that greenhouse gas that's being emitted, said the presidential candidate Barack Obama. Uh, in January, on January 7th, 2008, under my plan, a cap and trade system, electricity rates would necessarily skyrocket, he said in the same interview. So electric electricity rates are indeed set to skyrocket, as he predicted in 2008. That was didn't really predict. That was the policy that was going to go forward. It's similar to what I was talking about: the uh, Marines going from Japan to Australia, and you know, after the Marines that were already uh, being deployed. To Australia uh, you know when I was there they kept talking about in Australia oh we're gonna have you know American bases in Australia this is we're gonna have permanent bases because it was always just temporary uh, deployments six-month deployments but now they want to they were talking like this was in 2000 between 2000 and 2004 they were talking about permanent Australia bases and now I'm just kind of it's kind of just ironic now that we're seeing Marines and all that and all these uh, forces going to Australia. So this was all planned a long time ago. It has nothing to do with budget cuts, scaling back, thinning out the police force in the army, right? Um, th th it was planned that the bankers were going to rob most of the wealth in a short period of time, and then they were going to uh, do what they're doing now, uh, which is adapt to modernize the 
the, their forces, their own private army. Microsoft tests smart home waters with Home OS. So it says Microsoft is looking to unify electrical appliances within the home and establish itself in the uh, burgeoning smart home market with the development of Home OS. And if it plays out, this will be hooked in with the smart meter and all that. So, and they say that, oh, the user, the user, well, you know, <laughs> It's going to be remotely controlled, so you know that's the whole plan with the smart meters, and it has to do with cap and trade and emissions and the religion of sustainability, which you're going to sacrifice your life and your family and your future uh, to save the planet. So, it says here, uh, the scientist James Lovelock, I was alarmist about climate change. So he goes on there says he was a maverick science who's scientist who became a guru to the environmental movement with his theory of. Uh, of the Earth as a single organism, has admitted to being an alarmist about climate change, and said, "Oh, you know, uh, oops, sorry about that." But he made a book, made a lots of money, um, uh, pushed the globalist agenda and the Club of Rome's plan of uh, global warming and sustainability forward. So he wins, and you lose. You know, you lose your money and whatnot. So Max Planck Institute director admits physical causes unclear, models inconsistent with observations. So it goes on here, says more cracks like never before are appearing in Germany's climate alarmism, alarmism, global temperatures remaining flat over 15 years, defying model projections. So this is just some, uh, you know, just basically follow up to it. Summertime blues, this is from April 23rd. And it goes on here, it says that the, thanks to the National Park Service, uh, who wants to set aside a large swath of pristine area in the marine reserve zone, so you might have to leave the fishing poles at home. That's right, no kites, no pets, no vehicles. Uh, pedestrian access and so yeah uh, it basically they're just doing this all in the name of the planet and training people to sit there and not really get immersed in nature and be, be one with it but just kind of look at it right just you know uh, just look at it don't touch it just stay in your little cubicle in your little prison cell uh, is Obama negotiating we have 69 members of the US House of Representatives have sent Barack Obama a letter expressing their concern that a new international treaty currently being negotiated would essentially ban all buy American laws. I don't know why you have to have a law to have people buy, them, buy American products. All you have to do is get the global sellout traders out of the House of Representatives and Congress and in the presidency and the executive branch out of the country. Or just <laughs> don't let them be in power and, and rule your fate. And they won't be uh, sending all of your jobs and paying uh, companies to move out of the country, right? So it says here, oh yeah, and then uh, immigration policies, right? They're, they're bringing all these people, and it's like the people that are here don't even have enough jobs, right? 86 million invisible unemployed. So that's right, Americans not in labor force by age. It goes on, it says there are far more jobless people in the United States than you might think. And it goes on, it says, well, we all know that their jobless rates were around what? Around 20%, but they're always telling us it's nine because they don't factor in those that are unemployed. Um, that are no longer working but not collecting benefits anymore. See, so it goes on there, it says, and it says, hiring isn't strong enough to keep up with population growth. Now we're getting into useless eater uh, territory. But it says the labor force is now at the smallest size since the 1980s when compared to the broad, broader working age group. And I came across this article, Debt Serfdom in One Chart. This blue line that starts in 19, about 1980, the same year um, or time frame, is what? is the bottom 95 percent the red is the top five percent and you can look at it this and it says wage stagnation financialization 1983 to 95 households use debt to maintain spending as real wages fall and then the dot-com bubble here in the 90s and then here in the past uh well, about nine years housing bubble and uh, you see the bottom 95 percent uh middle class debt skyrocketing while the top five percent incomes rise debt loads decline so as this is happening, of course, you're going to have eugenics. Like I said, there's too many people and not enough jabs, right? So all by design, family GPs are ordered to cut number of patients referred to hospital to earn extra cash. It's a controversial scheme. And like I said, with the scaling down the military and budget cuts, right, and the police and, uh, and all these other services, uh, oh, we're going to have to cut them down because, you know, it's just a tight budget. It's, they call it efficiency savings. So that's the part of eugenics. They call it efficiency savings. I used a spy camera to catch a care home thug beating up my mother, how a daughter's suspicious lead to her uncovering heroin case. And so this is what happens when you get put in one of these uh, basically left-to-die homes while you're 
children don't have time to have really family for themselves, their own children, because they're away up with the state being indoctrinated. Um, they have to sit there and be able to sled away so they can pay their taxes and make their car payments and pay all that interest to the bankers. So we know the Greeks are uh, feeling that pain. Brussels expects thousands of small Greek uh, businesses to close. And it's interesting because I came across these articles, the bank's nightmare is coming true. Greek left calls for anti-bailout coalition. Says everyone knows it is merely a bailout of Europe's insolvent banks using Greek taxpayer funds. Then this next up, be afraid. Uh, exultant Greek neo-Nazis warn rivals. So Greek neo-Nazi party, Golden Dawn warned rivals and reformer Sunday that the uh, time for fear has come. So start uh, getting in some fear. And remember this, uh, fascist rises from the depths of Greece. The spirit neo-Nazi party wants work camps for immigrants is on course to win its first seat in parliament. Just like in the United States. Remember I was talking about that. A very Nazi Friday. Go check this video out and it talks about it. Right? It talks about exactly what's going on. And that's why you have this. An EU plot to scrap Britain. Senior Eurocrats are secretly, secretly plotting to create a super powerful EU president to realize their dream of abolishing Britain. The sovereign Europe and Britain. And that's what? Uber president, right? EU ponders Uber president. So check that out. Links will be posted. Then we have soldier who died while Skype chatting uh, was not shot. Army concludes. So it goes on and says a soldier who died in Afghanistan while Skype chatting with his wife in America did not have a bullet wound. So that's what the investigation found. It says Clark's wife previously described chatting with her husband on April 30th when the soldier suddenly fell forward and she saw a bullet hole in the closet behind him. I wonder what he was talking about on Skype. Just a quick uh, thing because I'm going to get into some Big Brother here. Is um, Just on my own personal experience with Skype, when I have conversations, I get shut down after 20 minutes. And then eventually we started shutting off. Uh, we were self-censoring and cutting off the conversations prior to a 20-minute uh, uh, time limit. And then they started to actually cut us off before that. So... So who knows, who knows, maybe he was uh, talking like this Marine uh, who criticized Obama on Facebook, and now he's going to be uh, discharged. So uh, Next up, Georgia opens first jail devoted to U.S. veterans, so maybe that's where this Gary Stein's going to be heading, right? Solely for uh, uh, veterans who speak out. So it says here, a problem U.S. military veterans falling into a life of crime. Ooh, a life of crime. You're protesting, huh? You're out there protesting. That's a life of crime after returning from Iraq and Afghanistan has reached levels uh, that law enforcement, uh, unfortunately, in Georgia has opened what is believed to be America's first county jail devoted to veteran inmates. So if you're a veteran, you know what type of help you're going to get from the Veterans Affairs. They don't give a crap about you. You know, I mean, if you know about eugenics, you know how you've been kind of used by the by the uh, military industrial complex. You'll know that they just want you to die off. So uh, when you see this, super soldiers fight disease with uh, bionic implants. And they're talking about using uh, these nanoparticles to kill diseases. Well, it has nothing to do with them. They don't care about them. Um, it's, this is about robots. This is about going in uh, with robots who are going to be cyborgs, who are going to have actual, um, be able to digest food and stuff like that for an energy source. I've covered that before. That technology exists. Um, then they're going to be able to do what? They're going to be able to fight off diseases with this stuff. So it's not really for humans. It's for when they're done with you guys, the humans, who ask questions, too many questions and want um, benefits afterwards. Well, they're just going to go solely to cyborgs and robots. Now, I'm sure you heard of this. No fly zone to be enforced by shoot to kill order during NATO summit. That's right. But it goes on and says plans to keep residents and dignitaries safe. So they're going to keep the slaves safe and the... Uh, these Eurocrats, these technocrats, safe during the NATO summit, including a no-fly zone with a shoot-to-kill warning. So this is turning into Libya-type uh, stuff. NATO summit in Chicago could mean airport-style security on metro electric South Shore trains. And then the city is surprised by the NATO security plan of Operation Red Zone, basically forced evacuations and quarantines and wearing battle gear, the militarized police, right? Uh, flight quarantine at Chicago Midway that is over nothing. That's just to get people used to being able to be quarantined. So if you are protesting at the NATO summit, you may become a political prisoner and have to go to a re-education camp. A shocking U.S. Army manual that describes how political activists, including American citizens, are to be indoctrinated in re-education camps. Also includes rules on forced labor and separating pol political prisoners by confining them in isolation. Building the Pentagon's Like Me weapon. The Pentagon wants to understand the science behind what makes people violent or basically stand up for their rights. So DARPA is even looking at how this can be used to persuade people not to support the enemy. 
but like the Pain Ray heat gun, it's tested in the Middle East and used here.